these gloves are so warm. My hands will stay warm all winter. Wait, Alyssa, look at this. Wow, your weather app said it's gonna keep getting warmer all week. We can definitely lose the hats, gloves, and scarves. No more freezing weather for us. While we do a quick wardrobe change to Mac to Lakeland weather, let's check in with Gabe. He's in the library doing research on a major international sporting event where gloves, hats, and scarves are really needed. Not to mention skis, skates, bobsleds, and snowboards. Thanks, Gavin and Alyssa. Okay, Spurs, so here's the amazing event that I've been researching on. It is the 2018 Winter Olympics. I found this book by Larry Dan Berman that tells all about it. Listen to this. The Winter Olympics began in 1924 and happened every four years. Since the Winter Olympics all have to do with ice or snow, they have to be held where there are great ski slopes and lots of snow. When you're watching the Olympics, you've probably seen this Olympic emblem. That's the symbol of the five interconnected rings that show the Olympic spirit of friendship and unity. The colors are red, black, blue, green, and yellow. These colors appear on every single country's flag participating in the Olympic Games. Another familiar symbol of the Olympics is the Olympic torch. During the ancient Olympic Games, the torch was kept burning the whole entire time the Olympic Games were being held. For today's Olympics, the Olympic torch is carried across the world from the home of the Olympics, Olympia, Greece. It shows the link between the past and the present of the Olympic Games. Southwest Elementary Spurs had their own torch relay to celebrate the start of the Olympic Games. They ran the torch all the way around Southwest Elementary. Good job, Spurs. Let's go back to Gabby and Alyssa to learn even more about the Olympics. Now that you know we are talking about a major world event somewhere far across the world, I bet you can guess what it's time for. Where's Atlas? Okay, listen up everyone. Here are your clues. Atlas is at the site of 2018 Winter Olympics. This awesome gathering of the world's finest athletes started with opening ceremonies on February 9th and goes through February 25th. The host city is known for its two beautiful ski resorts, Alpensia Resort and Yongpyeong Resort, the largest in Korea. A high-speed train was opened in 2017 that connects Seoul, Korea to this beautiful host city high in the mountains. Average temperatures in February are between 31 and 13 degrees. So athletes and spectators will need to bundle up. If you think you know where he is, email us right now. We are standing by to see who gets it right. Oh, I got an email. Our first correct answer came from Ms. Reynolds' third grade class. Their answer was that Atlas is in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Every Olympic Games begins with an opening ceremony that celebrates the culture of the host country and has a parade of nations to welcome the competitors. Guess what, Spurs? We have a reporter who is at the opening ceremonies in Pyeongchang. Mrs. Care's niece, Miss Care, is in Pyeongchang at the opening ceremonies. Hi, this is Lindsay Care reporting live from the 2018 for the footage of the opening ceremony. That was amazing. Another fun way to celebrate the culture of a foreign country is to try the foods they eat. Let's check in with our food expert, Grayson, to see how our school lunch compares to a school lunch in South Korea. Thanks, Alyssa. I did some research into what school lunches are like in South Korea so we could compare. Our lunch today is spaghetti, chef salad, California blend, fresh fruit. School lunch in South Korea almost always consists of hot soup, and rice. Then, a variety of fruits, vegetables, kimchi, bread, and protein, like chicken nuggets, smoked fish, may also be added. So there are some similarities, especially lots of fresh fruits and veggies. We need lots of healthy foods to be our best at school, no matter what country we live in. Hey Gabby, look at this. I didn't know there was athletes from Florida competing in the Winter Olympics. Really? Well, let's go to Bailey and Kenzie for more about that. Hi Spurs, we're reporting live from the PE field with a winter sport update. You might be thinking, wait, we don't have ice or snow here in Florida. How can we have winter sports? Sometimes the sports are held indoor like ice skating, speed skating, and hockey. That's the case with our feature athlete of the day, Erin Jackson. She's an Olympic team member from Ocala, Florida. Erin started out as an inline skater, and listen to this. 
she just started competing in speed skating four months ago. And she's already good enough to earn a spot on the Olympic speed skating team. We definitely need to keep an eye on her during the Pyeongchang Games. Another way Olympic athletes can practice their sport year-round is to adapt it a little so that it works without the ice. Coach B did that for us so we could try out hockey. We started with basic skills for moving the puck. Then we got to try out a game. We played on the grass instead of ice and we used a ball that would roll instead of a hockey puck. It was a little different from the way the Tampa Bay Lightning play, but it was a lot of fun. Thanks Bailey and Kenzie. I'm sure with some practice you'll be great at hockey real soon. So when all the practicing is done and it's time for competition, Olympic athletes try their best to win an Olympic medal. Each country designs their own medals for the games they host. Each event gives out three medals, bronze, silver, and gold. These are the medals they give out in 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. You might have heard people say, go for the gold. That means try your hardest to be the best. It's fun to keep track of how many medals have been awarded for each competing country. Let's go to Lana for our Olympic medal update. Good morning, Spurs. Here's our total count of medals awarded in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. So far, Norway's in the lead with eight medals. Canada's in second place with six medals. Germany's in four, third place with five medals. And the U.S. is in fourth place with four medals. While we're thinking of medals, let's go do some medal math. Standing out as the best athlete in the world is an exciting honor that is recognized with an Olympic medal. The team bobsled event has four people in each bobsled. When the bobsled medal winners are announced, how many total medals will be given out that day? This is a multiplication problem and you can do it a couple of different ways. One way is with counters. Since you have three medals, bronze, silver, and gold, you'll need three groups of medals with four medals in each group. You should get a total of 12 medals. Or if you know your multiplication tables, that would be four times three. Okay, Gabby and Alyssa, back to you. It's exciting to see all of our Olympic athletes get their medals. Gabby, do you know we have some of our runners of our own right here at Southwest? We sure do. Our second nine week AR winners enjoyed cookies and cocoa with Miss Beardsley. Then our Spurs Bistro on January 24th celebrated students earning 125 Spur Bucks for great behavior. And on January 30th, each class nominated a student of the month who did a gold medal job demonstrating responsibility. Then on January 31st, Ladarius Sermons won a free tablet for his perfect attendance. First semester, how cool! Tune in tomorrow for more Olympic trivia. Gold medal math athlete information, and awesome students here at Southwest Elementary. Let's get busy on our schoolwork and go for the gold.